going to talk about uh, correlation. And correlation measures how closely a set of data points uh, track a straight line. And I guess there are, there are three basic examples, three basic pictures. Maybe I can put them all on one board here. So here's picture number one. Okay, so these points uh, track a line with positive slope. And in that case, the correlation coefficient R is the correlation coefficient. It would be close to one. It would be close to one. Uh, picture number two, you'd have a set of points that kind of are close to a line, track a line with a negative slope. In this case, the R, the correlation coefficient, would be close to negative one. And the third basic picture, I'm purposely drawing these sort of like in a circular pattern, so it doesn't really track a line with positive slope or negative slope. It doesn't track a line. Uh, in this case, the correlation coefficient R would be close to zero. There'd be no correlation in this example. Now, just one other little comment about this. Uh, the closer the line tracks, well, let me just draw two more pictures here. So let's say you had a line that was like real, a uh, bunch of points that would be almost exactly on a straight line, exactly on a straight line. Uh, in this case, the R would be one, that's perfect correlation. But if you had a set of points, they kind of track a line with positive slope, but not so exactly. This would be R maybe closer to point eight, still tracks, still tracks, but not as closely. So the basic idea about the value of R can be encapsulated in this little picture. So here's uh, a picture. Here's a negative one on a number line. Here's zero. Here's one. So an R value close to negative one, R is close to negative one point points with a correlation close to negative one, these uh, track a line with a negative slope. If the R value is close to positive one, then you track a line with positive slope. And close to zero, then there's uh, no tracking. There's no correlation, no linear correlation if the R is close to zero. So R is always, so, is always between negative one and positive one. So negative one is always less than or equal to R, always less than or equal to one. Uh, the calculator will calculate the R values for us. So in the homework, what they're going to do is they're going to give you a set of points or data points and ask you uh, the following question. Here's an example. Uh, draw 
a scatter plot and with alpha equals 0 0.05 test for linear correlation and they will give you a set of points of x values and y values I'll keep this simple, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Say the y values are 3, 5, 8, 10, and 13. So we're going to do this all on the calculator, of course. So the first thing for drawing the scatter plot, uh, what I'm going to do is enter these data points into lists. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear out list 1 and list 2 to get them empty. So clear list one, comma, list two, and then stat, edit. List three doesn't matter. So in list one, I'm going to enter one, two, three, four, five. And in list two, I'm going to enter the Y values, three, five, eight, ten, and thirteen. Okay, and then to get a plot, See up here above the y equals, there's something called stat plot. So we hit second, go up there, stat plot, and you get a list of the plots. We're going to use plot one. And the way I have this one set up is the correct way for doing this. But let me just show you what I mean by that. So if I go in and edit that plot one, notice I have it turned on. And there's various types of plots. So I can arrow across and change it. But you want that first type there highlighted. So on the type of plot highlighted, you have to have the X list as L1, the Y list as L2. The mark doesn't really matter, either little squares or plus marks or dots. So that's the way you want to have the plot set up. And then if I go to the Y equals menu, notice that that plot one there is highlighted. That means that it's, it's turned on. There's a toggle if I arrow up there and hit enter, see now it's off. If I arrow up there and enter again, now it's on. So you wanna make sure that's on, and to get a plot, if you go to zoom, this button here, zoom, and arrow down to stat plot, zoom stat, excuse me, zoom stat, then there's a, there's a picture of the data points. So it kind of looks like this. So here's the scatter plot from plot one and zoom stat. It looks, oh, something like this. One, two, three, four. There's the five points. They kind of track a line with positive slope. So that's how to get the scatter plot. And then there's actually a hypothesis test involved with testing for linear correlation with alpha equals 0.05. So the next step is, as with all hypothesis tests, there's three steps. Uh, one, uh, the setup. Two, the calculator. And three is the conclusion. Uh, the setup for all of these is going to be the same. The claim is that rho is not equal to zero. Now let me say what rho is. Rho is population correlation. Rho, that's Greek letter rho, is population correlation. Whereas the letter R is sample correlation. And so the question about these points that I gave you, do they come from a population that has linear correlation? So rho, remember linear correlation, rho is either close to one or close to negative one, which means if there's correlation that rho is not zero means that there is correlation. The opposite rho equals zero. The null hypothesis is rho equals zero, which is not from the original. And the alternate hypothesis is rho not zero, which makes for a two-tail test. 
Uh, the setup is going to be the same. This is it for all of the correlation hypothesis tests. On the calculator, so that was step one. That was the first setup. Step two on the calculator. I'm going to stat tests and I'm arrowing down to Linreg T test, which is down near the bottom here. There it is, Linreg T test. You want the X list to be L1. You want the Y, let me write that down, it's Lin. Well, you're gonna to go to stat, stat tests. And then you're going to go to Lin Reg T test, which uh, was down near the bottom. You want to have L1 listed as the X list, L2 for the Y list, X list, L1, Y list, L2. Frequency is 1. Uh, this, the row not equal to zero is the one that you want, row not equal to zero. And then for the regression equation, uh, you don't have to have anything there for the homework, but I like to put Y1 there for reasons that we will see. If you want to see how to do that, if I clear that, if you want to get a Y1 there, if you go VARS, Y VARS, function, and then Y1 is the first thing there. It'll put that there. I think for the homework, you don't need it, but I want to show why I sort of like it anyway. Then when I hit calculate, it spits out. There's uh, the T value. That's the test statistic T. Uh, the test statistic, which I think they ask you for in the homework, it's this T which is 25, and then the all-important p-value. The p is 1.403. That's enough, e to the minus 4. The p is 1.403 e minus 4, which is that e minus 4 puts three zeros, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 0, 3. And as usual, we can now draw our conclusion. Oh, one more thing about this. I think in the homework they're going to ask you for the correlation coefficient, which the calculator also gives you. If you arrow down, it's this R thing. See that 0.997? That's very close to 1. R is 0 0.997608, 6056. I'm sure they'll ask you to round that off in the homework, but that's the correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient, which is close to 1. And now for the hypothesis test, the conclusion, which is step 3, uh, P equals 0 0.000143 is less than alpha equals 0 0.05. That means reject H null. And it was not from the original claim. And if you go to the conclusion wording chart, reject H null, not from original, the sample data support the claim. So these points are linearly correlated. Sample data support the claim. Now I just want to mention one more thing that about the regression equation, the y equals a plus bx, this is actually in the next section, but if you store that, see what happened? It put the regression equation into y1 there, and now if I do zoom, zoom stat, there it is, see not only does it plot those points, but it also plots, plots the regression equation, and you can see how closely the regression equation tracks those points, these points are very closely correlated to align with positive slope.